into it. Julia Lee, what did you make of the first session? A big positive way to kick off 2012. James, it was great to see green on screen on the first trading session of 2012. The market up by 1.1%, but still holiday volumes, only $1.8 billion being traded. But what did help the market was better than expected economic numbers coming out, in particular in terms of manufacturing in China, India, as well as in Germany. In fact, Germany's DAX was up by a massive 3% overnight. Today, during our session, we also saw uh, the non-manufacturing uh, numbers coming out of China as well, and the services numbers there are uh, better than expected in fact back to expansion previously we had seen a number of 49.5 that jumped up to 56 so it does look like some of the fears around Europe and the impact that's going to have in terms of manufacturing and global growth really not material materializing and that helped confidence on markets and risk assets. In terms of Europe, Italy's 10-year bond yield back below that 7% mark, so a sigh of relief there. And we did see short-term yields also continuing to run lower in Europe, so another positive there. But in terms of negative news, Spain looks like it may be running a deficit of around about 8% of GDP in 2011. That's uh, uh, quite a jump from the expected 6% of uh, GDP that the number was expected to come through. So altogether, if we have a look at our trading session I guess a big impact from um, re regional markets which were closed so very low volumes saw Japan closed China closed New Zealand markets closed for a holiday but in terms of sector performances we did see the defensives lagging the cyclicals in fact the standout sectors on today's market were the materials the industrials as well as the financial space so very light volumes but it's a positive one for the first day and I guess most traders investors will be quite happy with that well, I suppose as you mentioned I mean the back end of last year in particular, we saw this ongoing sort of stream of, of pretty positive U.S. economic data. If we get maintain that, the expectation, the hope is that we do. And if we focus domestically, I mean, would you expect to see continued gains in our market? Because certainly a lot of people we spoke to at the end of last year suggested, look, take away Europe and just focus on the Australian market. And there's certainly a lot to like there at the moment. I guess if we uh, take away the European situation, uh, the market's looking relatively cheap, but of course it is Europe which has cast a shadow over 2011's performance performance and Europe which is expected to continue to cast its shadow over the 2012 performance as well. In fact in the US we have seen better economic numbers coming through in the second half of the year and that's been a huge positive but I guess the question mark is if we do see the expected uh, confirmation of recession in uh, Europe uh, in 2012 then what impact is that going to have in terms of global growth and in terms of US growth as well as China growth. So I guess the market going into 2012 hoping for a better year, but also uh, recognizing the big uh, challenges which will come for the market. And that seems to be in the form of uh, European decisions, in particular, uh, some medium long term decisions in 2012. Uh, 2011 it was all about uh, throwing liquidity at the market in 2012 the market really wants to see some solutions in regards to solvency or some of those European nations. Julie I wanted to get your thoughts on on the retail space a lot of interest in it obviously leading up to those Christmas sales we got some a survey out suggesting outlook still remains pretty weak we got some numbers just uh, earlier this afternoon saying those Boxing Day sales a little bit down on what re retailers had hoped for it doesn't look like much is coming together for, for the retailers heading into this year, except maybe interest rate cuts. I think retailers and media companies are suffering from the same thing, and that is that they are fo facing uh, both structural issues coming through from the internet and uh, I guess the digital age for media companies and for the retailers, the internet and internet shopping. And they're also seeing uh, the, the cycle being at a low as well. So facing the fact that shoppers aren't spending too much mm. money, media companies that uh, advertisers aren't spending too much money as well. So that they hit with this double whammy. I guess having a look at a private survey which come out came out today are uh, uh, done in Bradstreet and it still showed that sales expectations as well as profit expectations for retailers were much lower than a year ago so sales expectations down 15 points profit expectations down 22 points the good news is that compared uh, to the last 12 months that sales expectations is the highest that it has been in 12 months we also heard that Goldman Sachs would be kicking David Jones out of one of its portfolio so unfortunately we didn't see a good day for David Jones today down by 2.1% but some of the 
eight other retailers did manage to see a bounce back up. We saw JB Hi-Fi, Premier Investments, both having a good day, gaining more than 2.5%. And I guess a lot of pessimism is built into the retailers. The real buy signal, I think, will come once uh, expectations of earnings growth comes back into the sector. But at the moment, until uh, shoppers really start to spend money, I guess it's going to be a difficult environment because of two things. First of all, we are seeing shoppers still very reluctant to spend. And secondly, the structural issues, and that's competition coming through from the internet.